while downloading and analysing data is fine if you want to simply look for trends in the data, it can impose some frustrating constraints if you have a particular aspect of the data that you want to draw out. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to source and highlight aspects of freely available material so that it backs up the story that you want to tell. In this exercise, we're going to work with a graph depicting global temperatures over the last 12,000 years, showing especially the period since the last ice age, the Holocene Epoch. And we're going to show that recent high temperatures we've been experiencing are really nothing unusual. To follow along, you will need an image editing program such as Adobe Photoshop or Microsoft Paint. To locate the graph, we're going to be working with Google Holocene Temperature Variations or use the link given below. Drag the graph onto your desktop. OK, firstly some legal stuff. If you go to the bottom of the web page, you'll see that you are free to share, copy, distribute, remix and adapt the work, provided you attribute the work to, in the manner specified by the author or licensor, but not in any way that suggests that they endorse or they endorse you or your use of the work. So here goes. The graph was prepared by Robert A. Rohde from Publicly Available Data and is incorporated into the Global Warming Art Project. There is no suggestion that Robert A. Rohde or the Global Warming Art Project would endorse what I am about to do to their graph. OK, first up, let's see what the graph shows us. The graph is derived from several proxy temperature studies. These are mostly prehistorical temperature estimates based on ocean sediment cores, ice cores, pollen deposits, etc. from various places around the globe. The lines for each proxy record are colour-coded so that you can tell one from another. Halfway down the page are hyperlinks to the papers describing each proxy record. To get that thick black line that you see in the centre of your graph, these different proxy temperature estimates were first adjusted so that each shared the same mean value. Then, the averages of all the studies taken together at any given time were used to create the thick black line that dominates the graph. This gave a kind of best guess of the temperature over the last 12,000 years or so. Near the bottom of the page are all sorts of caveats, urging caution about how the graph should be interpreted, etc. But in order to do what we want to do, we won't worry about all of those. Across the middle of the graph, you'll see a dotted line corresponding to an anomaly score of zero. This represents the temperature as it was in the middle of the 20th century, that is around 1950. In the top right is an inset showing more detail of the proxy temperature over the last 2,000 years. It even has instrumental records included to show recent temperatures. So that's the graph. It is what it is. But if we are to use it to deliver a talk to sceptics, it needs to have a bit of a makeover. First, we have to deal with the coloured lines showing the various proxy temperature records. These vary wildly and suggest too much disagreement and uncertainty. There. That's better. Next, we have that inset graph showing the last 2,000 years in more detail. Unfortunately, this incorporates instrumental records that appear to show a steep temperature rise in recent times. Your image editing program will have a tool depicted as an eraser or some such that you can use to remove this potentially distracting feature. There. Finally, there is the global mean temperature record for 2004 on the main graph, which can be dealt with using the same tool. So our graph is now stripped back to the basics. Now hidden in there somewhere is information showing that much of the Holocene was actually warmer than now. How do we bring this evidence to the fore? Well first, add some labels of well-known climatic periods. Here are the Little Ice Age and the Medieval Warm Period. So far so good, but because we don't have recent instrumental records included in the graph anymore, we need some other way of showing our audience where current temperatures stand in the context of the last 12,000 years. Now, if current temperatures were around or 0.3 Celsius below what was once the mid-20th century anomaly line, that dotted line, that would mean that most of the Holocene was warmer than now. So that's an ideal place. From here on, that line will represent our present-day temperature. Just to make it perfectly clear to your audience, all areas below that line can be coloured blue to show when it was colder than now, and all those areas above the line can be coloured red. That's warmer than now. Your audience will now be able to see very clearly that much of the Holocene was actually warmer than the present time. 
they will also feel comfortable in the knowledge that since it was warmer than now throughout most of the Holocene, today's high temperatures are really nothing to worry about. So there's our final graph. All that's left now is to give your audience this important information that the mainstream climate scientists don't want them to know. I'm not very good at public speaking, so I'll hand over to Emeritus Professor Don Easterbrook. Here he is at the 4th International Conference on Climate Change, hosted by the Heartland Institute in Chicago, May 2010. During the uh, Holocene, which is the uh, time since the last ice age, uh, this is the modern day um, temperature. Warm is up, cold is down. This is coming out of the last ice age. From 10,000 years to about 3,000 years, the temperature was actually warmer than it is right now. And then it cooled for uh, over the, about the past 3,000 years with some ups and downs. We'll talk about these uh, little squiggles in a bit. Uh, here's the medieval warm period. Here's the little ice age, and we're right about in here. But look at most of the last 10,000 years. To close a lecture such as this, it's a nice touch if you can hand down some pearls of wisdom. Here, Professor Easterbrook offers a few noble tips regarding scientific integrity. So, my conclusion then is that um, keep an open mind, uh, let the data speak for itself, 